Hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed. I'm the founder and CEO of io.net. Today, I would like to show you some new step on starting to provide AI compute power using the Filecoin SPs. The presentation plan today, oh, interesting. Sorry, sir. Uh, the presentation today uh, will talk about the AI compute market first. Let's take us kind of snapshot, understand what's happening in the market. Um, then we will get into distributed computing. This specific term is really important, and I noticed that um, in crypto it's misunderstood. And I really want to explain the importance of distributed computer, uh, computing in the future of computing as the next gen cloud. And then how Ionet and Filecoin fits into this together. And then we'll show you a live demo of deploying a cluster on decentralized GPUs. So <coughs> let's get started. This study was done from 20, uh, 2012 to 2021 uh, to 2022. Uh, it shows that actually every 18 months, we need 10 times more compute power for AI models. That's a lot, 10 times com more compute. So if we have 1 million GPU in 18 months, we need 10 million GPUs. And, if, and now we have 10 million, in another 18 months, we need 100 million GPU. So the growth is going massive in this years. Because the requirement for this app is just growing and growing. And actually, the transformer model's requirement, it grew up 275 times in the last two years. Uh, the AI, all AI models in general, they grew up in the last two years 205 times compute power required, TFLOPs required, to make this model happen, like to, to build the model and to run the model. Now, the reason why all this is growing is directly connected to data, right? Like the more compute power, then there's a lot of data to process. And it's just so frustrating, honestly, to, to see that all this compute power and all this data that was used, it's, it's one thing. Like Compute power and data is, is all directly connected. And here you see like a very beautiful way how can Ironet and Filecoin serve the next AI cloud. Now, another study was like by Arc Invest. She's um, uh, the uh, ETF, she have ETFs in the market, Kathy Woods, uh, Elon Musk friend. She did this analysis on like projected hardware spend driven by AI. I think this analysis was in 2021. Uh, this is like the end year lookout for 2022. And it says like, like they're expecting in 2030 to reach $1.7 trillion spent on AI compute, storage, network, just to make these AI models run. Now, this is what they're projecting, and I believe this is going to be 10 times what they're projecting. Now, OpenAI, when they built the model, they leased more than 300,000 CPU divide, which is a server. You can't put two CPUs. Uh, like, maybe you can have two CPUs in one server, but how much you can have more? So that's like 300,000 different devices. Now, to build the model, and 20,000 GPU. So CPU is important, still. GPU is important. It's more important, of course, but both of them play. So the importance of GPU and CPU is just like the importance of GPU and, and storage. It's the same thing. All of them are important. And after they built the model, after they paid all these millions to lease these GPUs, it's not about building the models. It's, not, it's the lifetime of the model. When, when Once the model is built, you need to deploy this model on on GPUs, you need to, to run it. The more users you have, the more you need, uh, yeah, the more compute power you require. So currently, OpenAI is paying $700,000 a day just for this model to be inferenced. For the user, when you prompt the model, it gives you back a result. That's cost them $700,000 a day. Now, the SAS CapEx flowing into AI compute, 50% of the SAS CapEx in the future is flowing into AI compute. And if you notice that all these guys who are building SaaS apps, you know, email, marketing, et cetera, et cetera, they're, like, the cost of this SaaS service, they're using some other model on some other service, someone else who's hosting the model and providing this, like OpenAI. They have the OpenAI API. You can build anything on top using the OpenAI API. So we're seeing a future where people are building these SaaS apps. It's already happening right now. 3,000 of them right now, live startup using OpenAI API, and they built an app on top of that. So 
So basically, the, the cost of any SaaS startup is 40% is going to AI compute. Even though they are not renting really AI compute or renting GPUs, but they're using some product that's using the AI at the end. So this is really important for us to focus on. Now, the light speed AI adaption is crazy. Two months reach, uh, in two months, uh, OpenAI reached 100 million users with ChatGPT. That means that currently the market is so appetite for some new technology, and it's light speed adoption. But because of this adoption, you need distributed computing. How are you going to scale such large model and replicate it on a lot of machines and devices, GPUs, so this model could serve this demand? It's really complex. And Ash is considered one of the most complex computer science uh, fields, which is distributed computing. So if you want to provide GPUs at scale, you can't just give people an instance of 32 GPU or 64 GPU. That's for indie developers. That's for people who are playing around, just learning. If you really want to serve enterprise, enterprises, you need to provide clusters of 500, 700 GPU. That's like a guy, three guys, I know them, three guys playing around. They have 100,000 users on, a, on a, an app that generates 3, 3D model for video game designers. 900 GPU, paying $6,000 a day. Just playing around. So we need a lot of GPUs. But not just, you know, here's a GPU, here's a GPU. We need to cluster this GPU together into a network that, can be, that people could scale at something that could serve something like ChatGPT or something that could serve something like Instacart. So Instacart, they're using distributed machine learning. And I'm going to just tell you some examples. They have tens, tens of thousands of models. These models. You know, they predict delivery ETA, they plan the supply of the couriers, they optimize routing models for shoppers, <laughs> those guys who are going to shop for you and buy for you your grocery. There's a model for that. And there's a model for that based on the zip code and based on the time of the day. So there's a model that's used to predict the best route from 1 to 3 p.m. at this zip code. Literally, Instacart has tens of thousands of models. So let's say 10,000 models. These models. 10,000 models, where are you going to run them? You need GPUs. So, and this is just one company. From my experience, and all the friends I know are the big firms, all of them, they say, we have not yet scratched the surface of what we could do with ML models, because we don't have the compute power to do it. <coughs> I heard it myself from a guy who's working at Facebook. He told me, if we have the compute power, we will build a model for every person. Every person will have his own model, so they could give you the right advertisement that you like, just you. A full model that just learn about you, and not just one. It will be a model based on uh, your location, when you travel, a model on the time of the day. So they're going to build models for So imagine 1 billion, 1.4 billion model. They don't have the compute power for that. But what's the benefit for them to do it? Is of course they can have more targeted ads, more personal ads. He told me, we can generate a video as an ad just for you with this model. It will generate a video based on what you like. And it will make this advertisement of this company just how you like it. And only you will see this video. So a video will just be generated like that. But they don't have the compute power to do it. They, they tested it, they experimented, but they don't have the compute power to do it at such mass scale. So we have not yet scratched the surface of the need of GPUs or what could the world <laughs> innovate if we have more GPUs. Now, Hugging Face have 340,000 models, and these models, for example, look at this model. 60, 67 million download of this model. So I would guess 10 million GPUs was used, you know, multiple people testing here, testing there, downloading, to run this model. Hugging Face have 347,000 models, and it's, it's going 10, 20,000 models every week. And these are just the open source models. Where are we going to host this model? Why these models are not hosted in Firecoin? It makes no sense, guys. Look, you talk to the, I'm talking to the, why these 340,000 models not on Firecoin? This, is, this should be on Firecoin. This is open source. Now, not only it should be on Firecoin, but it should be also computed on Firecoin. They have the GPUs for it. The infrastructure right now have the GPUs for it. But uh, now I stepped in with Ionet and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. So. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So you said, why should this model live on Filecoin? <clears throat> yeah. 
That's well, a huge storage man. Yeah. But if, but if, so please help me understand where I'm missing something here. Um, if I store material in the cloud plane, it may take a few hours to get the material back. Oh yeah, well, on the IPFS layer, no? Yeah, but you didn't say IPFS, you said cloud plane. Well, no, I mean, in general, Filecoin, sh Filecoin should be able to, yeah, yeah, Filecoin should, yes, if you guys want to. Can Filecoin be used as a platform to store and retrieve material from in any kind of reasonable time frame? On hot storage, it's, it could. On what? On the hot storage, it could, why not? Uh, the, the short answer is yes. I know the future yeah. is bright and rosy and everything like that. I'm talking about reality today. And so, like, reality, like, you really can't do this today, right? Well, if you were in uh, the uh, opening presentation on the Delta stack, yeah. we're in, uh, and just uh, not to delve into space, uh, the storage providers that are participating on that have the option of keeping the hot copy and. Uh, well, I understand that. I get that options, you know, hot yeah. copy, but today, I mean, I'm trying to do this we today. We are two years up for, uh, Thank you. from having three seconds to first one. Understood. So that's the answer to your question. Like Thank you. Thank you for taking care of it. Because you can't do it. That's the answer to the question. No, no, no I wouldn't say we can do it. I would say there was not enough focus. No, no sorry, sorry, sorry. I would say there was not enough focus on doing this. Okay. Okay. But it's, 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 right now it's booming fast, and it's moving really fast. And instead of looking at as people just trying to find someone to put a uh, verified uh, simple, you know, storage uh, uh, client, you have all these models there that are growing massively, 20, 30,000 models, and they need storage for it. This model, definitely they need hot retrieval, fast retrieval for it, but still they need storage. That's how many terabytes, petabytes these models are. And then you have to copy the model and the different versions of the model and so on. So that's a big opportunity here. I'm just telling you as a community that there's a big opportunity there. Um, next, I'm moving into introducing IONIT. So IONIT is, is a decentralized GPU cloud. Uh, we're powered by Solana uh, and Filecoin and Render. And we're trying to source GPUs from anywhere we can. And then basically we harness the power of these GPUs into a single cluster that people could deploy, play around. Um, it's very scalable, it's accessible, and uh, the compute power is massive. There's no limits on how many GPUs a client could rent. There's no KYC, there's no questions asked. Just book whatever you want, uh, and it's really cheap. So it's out-of-the-box integration. You can deploy TensorFlow, Ray, PyTorch, FSDP, and Kubernetes. Kubernetes could be deployed. So your GPUs as an SP could provide Kubernetes services to and be a, like a, be a worker node in a huge Kubernetes cluster, uh, and that work in a decentralized Kubernetes cluster. Now, people create cluster by basically you know, choosing host type, Filecoin, IO network, they choose the location, they could choose multiple locations, I'll show you now, and you just 10 seconds and the cluster is live. Now, mainly, mainly, the network is not for those who want 10 or five or six GPUs or 24 GPUs. The network is for those who want to parallelize ML workloads in a single cluster, 10,000 GPUs from across the planet. The technology we have is capable of bringing all these GPUs together, coordinating the uh, task scheduling, coordinating the fault tolerance, coordinating, ca taking care of auto-scaling and downscaling and so on. And so it's kind of centralized and decentralized. It's in the, it's in the middle, right? It's like, <laughs> just like when Binance started, before, there's, you know, before Dex, Binance started, it cleans up everything. Before we go to fully decentralized, we wanted to understand exactly the flows and processes of all these bookings, uh, verifying compute that happened on the, on, the G, on the GPUs we rented and so on. Wanted to do it in a central, just to move quickly in the market before, the mar before someone else takes the opportunity, and then a road to decentralization. Now, it, for engineers, it's better because it's easy to implement. It's so fast to run the cluster. It's cheaper almost like 90%. Uh, and they save a lot, not every time 90%, of course, could be 40, 60% cheaper, depends on the GPU they rent. GPUs for us, they, if you have like high-end security, SOC 2 compliant, this is like the highest paid. If you have five gigabits bandwidth and download, uh, upload, this is the highest paid. Uh, if you have 100 megabit download and upload, I don't guarantee you someone gonna rent it. You could plug it into the network, but it's so low in, 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 in value. So 
we basically put your GPU farm to work. Uh, you, have, you, you have a reputation. We monitor your internet connectivity. You can claim your rewards with Solana Pay. Uh, and basically, you can see all the jobs on, on your account. For you, it's 100,005% more profit every hour. And it's predictable profits. And uh, we'll, I'll show you the infrastructure right now. Now let me, show you, let me show you the real demo. So this was presented at Multicoin Summit a few days ago. Um, it's a venture capital. So here I want to show you the cloud. We have Ironet Cloud, Ironet Worker, Ironet Explorer. So let's start with the cloud. So in this cloud, you can see currently like the GPUs available in the network. Let's say I have A6000, A6, I have 40 of them, as an example. Uh, but this is real GPUs, so it's for 45 cents. I go there, I want to deploy a cluster. I could deploy a Kubernetes cluster. I could deploy a Ray cluster. Next, I, have, I give my cluster a name. So I'm going to call it Multicoin Summit. Then I will go to a supplier, and I'll choose from where I want the GPU. You can notice, Ironet Supply offers a cutting edge global network infrastructure. Basically, these are only data centers and, mining, and big mining farms. Render, they have consumer GPUs. Then we have um, Filecoin, still not yet fully implemented. Uh, they are for intensive workloads and massive size models. Uh, and they're best for serving. Then I choose the location. I could have G GPUs from two different locations. And next, I will choose the processor, like which GPU available. Currently, we have, for example, the A6000. I'll put the quantity, how many GPUs I want. I say I want security compliance or end-to-end -end encrypted. And then I'll choose the connectivity tier I would like my cluster to be at. So I want my cluster to be really fast. Then I will choose the image of this cluster. Now, look, this is the engineer for uh, someone who's, who is renting cluster. He's, he's an engineer, a coder. Look at how simple it is. Now, um, then I'll just, here, yeah, I'm just going to choose the quantity, how many GPUs I want. Um, 24 GPUs, just to be safe. Even though I had like four. No, it gives you the maximum quantity available. But you can choose any quantity, how much you want. If no, no, I mean, like, like you have a greater estimate how much, uh, how many GPUs you need for the task. Like. That's a good question. Um, I think the engineer himself knows that. Uh, you could start with two and then increase the GPUs when you feel like it's very overloaded. Yeah, 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 kind of that way. And you could also expect how many people are going to inference the model and so on, so you try to scale it out. Now, at the end, it's the build time. I just pay my bill. I want all this cluster for two hours. Um, continue pay with Solana Pay. This is launched, by the way. It will be launched next way, uh, next, next end of this month at Solana Breakpoint main stage. This is our launch event. Um, anyway, just a few seconds. I put the wrong name for the cluster. Now I can see that in the deployment requested, I have uh, a cluster that's requested to be deployed. It's sent to the network. The GPUs are fr the, there's going to be 24 GPUs or 24 devices that have the GPUs from across the planet. On two, well, there's just two countries now. Um, and what happens is the network will send requests to them. Please join this new cluster. And you wait a few seconds, um, and you, what would you see is. You know, and this cluster now, I'm just like looking at my information of this cluster. It's built for Ray. It's a SOC 2. Uh, the location is Norway. These are my Ray dashboard, my Visual Studio code, and my Jupyter notebook. So I can have an experience of coding as an engineer easy and simple. It's, you're just like you are 30 seconds away from deploying a cluster of 10,000 GPUs and just going and coding. Where is that in the whole planet? I'm ready to give any one of you, if you can go to any cloud provider and open a new account and get 500 GPUs. I'm, I'm going to give you 10% of my company, if you can find it. There is none. It's really hard if you are a you know, new account. Now, what happened is, just let me show you. This is the side where maybe you guys are more interested. So I was scrolling down, scrolling down. Here I can see wh who are the workers that are taking part of this cluster. So we have the Explorer. It's a public, it's a public uh, information. So I can see that in my cluster that I just requested to create, there was this iWorker1. This is his device ID. This is the, GPUs we, the GPU we hired from him, and this is the statistics that he is up all the time since we started this cluster. Um, now I'm going to just like scroll to the 16th or whatever uh, worker, random one. I'll just click on it, and then I'll go to the public page, the public explorer page, like a wallet in, in Etherscan, that you can see that this device is up for 22 hours. It's from Canada. This is the GPU he has. He's currently hired. This is his uptime. This is his connectivity tier. It's ultra high speed. 2.6 gigabyte uh, inbound and outbound. Then you have his end-to-end -end encrypted. 
uh, you can see all the services that this worker has. Like you can install more services, you can provide uh, Unreal Engine Pixel streaming. There's multiple services you can install, so you would increase your utilization rate, but this means you need higher storage. And who has highest, the highest storage in the market? You guys. So now my cluster is ready. Uh, what happens is, you know, is it, Yes, every every device has his so own it has his own wallet in a way. Yeah. Oh. Um, now the, de the the cluster is deployed. All the nodes are together. We're gonna go to the Ray dashboard. In this dashboard, this for distributed computing, you'll see all the workers in the cluster, <laughs> all their information, the memory used, all whatever, full information. You can submit job to it. It's Visual Studio Code. You guys know Visual Studio Code. I just could go there and uh, and code whatever I want. Um, Beautiful, exp like simple experience. That's the goal here. We need to fix the UX in the crypto market. Um, and in the end, I want to show you something here since th it started. It, it's just like a playground of looking at a model running. Uh, and you can see like increasing the neurons, playing around. It's just like a, a play thing to play when, w to check your cluster is working or not working. Something like that, like a small check ping. Um, and you don't have to understand this. It's just something uh, nice to look at. Uh, but the main point is the cluster is running, you can do anything on it, and it was just fast. So this is like long story short, so um, thank you. That's Ionet underscore official if you could follow us on Twitter, and I'll be here for any questions. Now let's start questions. Yeah. So you don't have this, sorry. Yeah. So you don't have this running on Filecoin yet? No, we have uh, Filecoin SPs running this. Uh, the, the one thing that we want to try to optimize is um, when the ceiling happens, the thing is we punish the device. It goes offline because you know ceiling started, so we stop the worker on the device so we don't uh, affect the ceiling process. But then it affects the reputation of the worker in the market. So then someone else who does not do ceiling gets higher uh, priority. That's something we want to fix. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, two questions. Uh, each of the, the nodes that you just brought up into this cluster, <coughs> do they have a mechanism to do peer-to-peer -peer communication? Yes, they are all to all communication. Okay, so it's not a star or a spoke type out there. There's a, in the deploy cluster, you have peer-to-peer -peer communications? Yes, it is through mesh VPN. Second question, have you uh, tied off with Arc Compute, Arthur from Arc Compute and the uh, GPU virtualization functions that they're building on commodity GPU, because like we are RTX 3090s, I think that's probably our most commodity thing, but the fractional partitioning of the GPU infrastructure, it's all open source, openiob.org. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it, uh, we don't think there is a market for it. Yeah, because. What they're doing. Yeah. Like, like, you know, dividing. Uh, there's a lot of demand on a single GPU. So if you, well, yeah, the, the yeah, problem, yeah. the problem with this RTX 3090 is when the model is in the memory, you can't just separate it. Yeah. So they, they you, if someone else have more data and so many like security problems, you know, data were exposed or something because they remain in the coded memory inside the GPU. So th this is the only one that does this virtualization yeah. is the A the H100. It's hard coded from inside to to allow I think. Four or six something. Which is important. You're right. And amply reprovision the uh, the hardware aspects after a job has started. You can't do that. But if uh, I was looking at ways of leveraging, I was working with them to do concurrent ceiling pipelines because the bursty natures and the different workloads. Mm. That if I partition a rather high end uh, graphics card, then I could keep more of that graphics card busy at a time. And I, I was wondering if you interesting. Talk yeah, I would love to talk more about it. Yeah, nice. Uh, you had the question, right? Yeah, no, you, okay, you, you have to think it, think it might be fine, um, right? The, the NVIDIA cards are connected with the same media link between the cards, right? This sort of high speed point to point link between cards. If you're partitioning a job across multiple GPUs in different geographical locations, does the communication <coughs> between the cards become a problem for these AI models? It might be the answer, it's fine. But <coughs> it's a good question. Um, uh, the answer is very complicated, but summary, there is definitely a network overhead since the data is not in the same geographical location, not connected to the MVLink and so on. So there's definitely a network overhead. Now, the easy answer is 
when you chose the tier, you're expecting the speed. So if you chose the ultra high speed, then you know the, we're bringing the models, the, uh, the GPUs that are closer to each other. They have less uh, latency, ping, and so on. They have good, uh, very high internet speed. So latency becomes less of a problem. But when it's when there's no organization of the GPUs, if, if there's there's not this one, and then we give you just a random cluster that have the same GPU, but one of them is so slow. When you submit a work, you're as fast as the slowest one in the team, right? So then this becomes a problem. That slows all the, everyone. It depends on the job how it's how it, uh, executed. So generally, is no, it's better you take all of them on the same connectivity speed. There is definitely a small network, not a small, but there is some network overhead. Uh, but it could be very well optimized with the way you use the GPU, uh, the way you tranche the data, if you do tensor parallelism. I don't want to get into two technicalities. I'm trying to simplify it. S short answer, there is a network overhead. Uh, but the user knows that beforehand, so he's not like surprised of the network overhead. And that's actually why also the prices are cheaper. But, but above the network, where I guess, on a GPU, right, you've got the choice of the B-size press or the, or the yeah. application. So I suppose, yeah, I think the, the answer to this question is understanding the nature of how these guys, how enterprises deploy models. So some of them, they deploy a model that's just basically replicated. I, 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 I go, why the A100 is the most demanded GPU? It's more than H100 demanded. Why? Even the H100 is much better. Uh, but the H100 had 180 gigabyte and the A100, or 80 gigabyte, and the A100 also had 80 gigabyte of VRAM. Now, the nature of how these models are deployed is I want all the model in the GPU memory. So I don't want to paralyze. Because I would paralyze when I don't have, so right now, for example, I have a guy who has 47,000 AMD GPU. What can I do with his GPUs? Nothing. N not, I can't lease it. No one wants it. But what I can do is bring most famous models, parallelize them, par tensor parallelism on all of them, and provide inference service. And I get them for like one cent an hour or something. So I could make a lot of money out of this. But it's not, it's like a different thing to do on the side. Uh, but they, why the A100 is so demanding? Because they want to put all the model there. Now the model, if, if it's enough to put in an 80 gigabyte, then there's no communication with other GPUs. There's no need for communication. Everything happens inside the GPU already. The communication mainly happens when I'm using, for example, Ray for distributed computing. And then I, w like I have different versions of this model for different people. No, that, that makes sense. It's, it's, it's essentially memory expansion. Of the GPU yeah. Uh, only on training, when you train a model, then you intensively need to distribute a lot. On inference, you, you distribute. Like There's some server that knows the balance here and there, and it sends requests there. But when you go there, like. Maybe one of the GPU could talk to some object store, some storage here to get some data out of it or something, but there's not a lot of communication. But anyway, our network, it's all towards. So every port talks to every port of every worker. All of them open and talking to each other, if they need to. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so just to follow up on that question, yeah. so are all the uh, uh, GPUs in the same data center? Uh, Which one? Uh, just the one that you give an example, right? The 47,000 AMD? Preferably, but, yeah. but actually, if you, th if, if you look at reliability, we are conducting a research now. We'll launch it to our wi with white paper. It's more reliable to have our cluster than to have a cluster in a data center because it will never fail. It's always a cluster. It's not one. So if one node fails, one location fails, you have everywhere around the world. So you can't stop it, basically. It's just running. If you open auto-scaling, Whenever, I, I, now I have the cluster of 100 GPU, for example. If auto scaling is open, if I need more, it will bring more. Uh, if healing is allowed, if this dropped, we'll kick him out, we'll bring another one immediately. We always have a backup node. And so it's always reliable. And, we, and it's not just like one and then it sits shut down and everything is down. No, it's a lot of GPU. So whatever shutdowns, it doesn't matter. Yeah, your server, your the cluster is running. Right? As, huh? long as, as long as they're in the same location, you're able to add more. GPUs. No, no. I can add GPUs from Tokyo to Norway, the consumers at home, everyone. And all of them in the same cluster, and all of them serving the same model. That, that's what I showed here. Yeah. Depending on the connection speed that you chose, right? It's pretty 
but uh, but all of them have to have the same connection speed, yeah. just for the you, for you not to feel the latency or. Uh, you so know. how do you solve that problem? Because the, the bandwidth is different in different parts of the world, and. Um, well, if you look, if you have ten gigabits download upload speed on these yeah. GPUs, you don't not you really don't feel it. What I want with the NVLink, sorry. 10 gigabyte, you don't feel it. Like you get the inference in less than in 88 you know, of a second. Nothing. And they are all around. No one cares. And actually, last thing I would say, technical, I'm really sorry. There's also another study that's done that actually distributing the inference of the model over 100 or 200 GPU is more, uh, is more efficient than loading the model from memory you know, to the GPU to inference it, because when you just transfer a small layer of the model, it's faster to be transferred over the internet than to move the model from the, G from the hard, from the, literally, to the, uh, to the GP memory. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, the internet is getting better. The internet is getting better, let's just say that. FPGAs as of, like what? TPUs and well, we we were talking with uh, Intel. They have the Intel Gaudi, uh, Gaudi 2. Uh, that's something we want to put in with another cloud provider, like he's a, a partner. Um, but TPUs, you know, they're licensed by Google and Amazon, so we can't get our hands on it. Uh, but we would love to have TPUs here because that's the future. Uh, FPGAs. I heard about the homomorphic encryption FPGAs. That's something I would love one day in the future to you know get into. Uh, but yeah. Bear in mind, they're, they're using the extra capacity, like within the context of our network, and the fact that it's extra, uh, <coughs> mostly idle capacity in between ceiling jobs and whatnot, and we happen to have a co-resident, the storage for the inference models, and we happen to have a lot of uh, large public data sets, even if it doesn't do the 30 minutes to first fight, the, the guy would have a clue what he wants to do this afternoon, has all this capacity and all these capabilities sitting there right there poised in the back of the slingshot, and all he's got to do is hit the go button. And if it takes 30 minutes to pull the show off today, so what? That, that it is essentially, because it's running, if, if, I'm, if I'm tracking it, we're, we're running on mostly idle capacity anyway in the context of the cloud plane network, leveraging data that we already have. And if we're not chasing Microsoft and Azure as they shoot each other in the head from the race of completely open source uh, uh, training models, but taking the product of that and being able to run the same data set against four or five models in a distributed cluster of 150, 200 GPUs that can render an, an answer to a question or even give you a statistical mean, the same way the weather's done today, they say three out of four models say it's gonna go this way. Well, the resources, the length of resources of the Filecoin network give you that same thing against 50 models and against a, web, a data set that's as big as the, uh, the data forecast, the data that goes into our forecast for a 24 hour period. Guys, long story short, uh, thank you very much for this. I think the, finish, the yeah, session is over. Yeah, one more question. Uh, if we can do one more, then we'll open. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Since most modeling being done off of uh, A100 or H100, does your network natively break that apart if they choose a 3090 cluster, it or works. Do, they have to, do they have to recode the models? So no, 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 no. Look, as long as it's NVIDIA GPU, there's nothing you have to do other than using Ray and it's fully configured, it's working. There's a lot of problems with AMD. Uh, I'm so angry on them. <laughs> it's just like I'm angry on Filecoin on losing this opportunity of the storage of the model. Uh, it's a huge opportunity that could be double or triple the current size of these. Um, whatever is stored on Filecoin now. Um, and same thing for AMD, they have the infrastructure, they have everything, but they are so slow in moving in, in building the drivers for these uh, ML uh, frameworks and libraries. But NVIDIA is moving so fast, that's why they're eating the market and everyone's using them. So as long as NVIDIA, you can create a cluster of any type of GPUs, but all of them have to be the same GPU. So you, can't you don't create a cluster of A100 and 3090 because they will make each other slower when you distribute the tasks. That's it. Thank you guys.